Thursday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. Today I'm continuing to teach through a series I've entitled, The War Is Over, based on Luke 2.14, that glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill towards men. This is peace from God towards us. The war is over. When God gave the Old Testament law, He declared war on sin. He began to start imputing man's sins unto them. Now, in our program yesterday, I was sharing out of uh, Romans chapter 5. Let me just go back over and read this. Romans chapter 5, verse 13. For until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed where there is no law. The word impute means to hold against, to record. God wasn't dealing with us after our sins. Not because sin was not a factor, but through faith. In a sense, it's kind of like a credit card. Did you know when you give a credit card to buy something, you didn't really pay for it. You just had it imputed unto you. You had it put on your account. And then they send a bill to your credit card company, and then your credit card company sends a bill to you, and you have to pay it. If you don't understand, if you don't believe what I'm saying, just, just when the credit card company sends a bill, say, hey, I've already paid for it. I already gave my credit card there at the store. No, that did, you didn't pay for it. You had it imputed unto you. And in a sense, it was on credit. It was put to your account. Well, in the old covenant, God was dealing with mankind in mercy by putting everything on credit. He knew that the Lamb of God would come. Matter of fact, it says that the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. Before God ever created us, He already had the plan of redemption in place. He knew that we would rebel against Him, and He had already planned to send Jesus as His Son and to bear our sins for us. And so in a sense, in the Old Testament, God was not imputing our sins unto us because He knew Jesus would come. It was on credit, but there was going to come a payday, and Jesus would have to pay for our sins. And so I was sharing out of uh, Genesis chapter 3 that most people think that when Adam and Eve sinned, God drove Adam and Eve out of the garden because He just couldn't tolerate them. God was holy and they were unholy. But that's not what it reveals. Matter of fact, in the fourth chapter of the book of Genesis, you find that Cain and Abel brought a, a offering before the Lord. Now, where did they get this understanding about offerings? You know, uh, you could sit there and say that, well, in the third chapter, that uh, the Lord made coats of skins and covered them. He had to kill an animal to do that, and so they saw it in type, that God placed His judgment against their sin upon this animal, and then He used this animal skin to cover their nakedness. Well, that would explain the blood sacrifice, but Cain brought a first fruits of the ground. Now, some people say that that's the reason that God rejected His offering. Uh, I'm not even going to go there, but the Scripture says over in Hebrews chapter 3 that it was by faith that Abel's sacrifice was, was more accepted. Not the substance, but it was the faith that was behind it. Later in the law, we were actually commanded to bring a sacrifice of the fruit of the ground. And so I don't think it was the substance that was the problem. It was the fact that Cain offered it uh, in a wrong heart. You know, over in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, it even says in verse 3, it says, If you give all of your goods to feed the poor, or if you give your body to be burned, and don't do it motivated by love, it profits you nothing. That shows you that the motivation, the heart attitude behind your offering is more important than your offering. And I believe that that's what the problem was with Cain and Abel. Matter of fact, again, Hebrews chapter 11 says, By faith Abel offered a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. It wasn't the substance. It was the faith. It was the hard attitude. And when Cain saw that God had accepted Abel's offering and rejected his offering, he got mad. Let me just ask you this. You know, if you would use your brain as you read the Bible, it's amazing what you could get out of it. But just think about this. How is it that God showed His acceptance for Abel's offering and His rejection of Cain's offering? Think about this. 
WELL, IT DOESN'T SAY EXACTLY, BUT AFTER CAIN GOT ANGRY, THEN GOD SPOKE TO HIM AND HE SAYS, YOU KNOW, IF YOU DO WELL, YOU'LL BE ACCEPTED, AND IF YOU DO WRONG, SIN LIES AT THE DOOR. GOD WAS TALKING TO HIM IN AN AUDIBLE VOICE. SO, LET ME ASK YOU THIS. WHAT WAS THE DIFFERENCE BETWEEN WHAT HAPPENED IN THE THIRD CHAPTER BEFORE ADAM AND EVE SINNED WHERE THEY WERE FELLOWSHIPPING WITH GOD AND THEY HEARD HIS VOICE IN THE GARDEN IN THE COOL OF THE DAY? WHAT WAS THE DIFFERENCE BETWEEN THAT AND WHAT WAS HAPPENING WITH CAIN IN THE FOURTH CHAPTER? AGAIN, SEE, MOST PEOPLE THINK THAT THE MOMENT ADAM AND EVE SINNED, HERE IS HOLY GOD AND UNHOLY MAN, AND THERE WAS THIS JUST HUGE SEPARATION. HOLY GOD COULD NOT FELLOWSHIP WITH UNHOLY MAN. WELL, I WILL ADMIT THAT MAN BECAME UNHOLY AND THAT GOD IS HOLY, BUT GOD WASN'T IMPUTING THEIR SINS UNTO THEM, AND YOU CAN SEE IT BECAUSE HE WAS STILL TALKING TO CAIN AND TO ABEL, AND THIS SAYS THAT WHEN THEY WERE GROWN, THEY DID THIS. YOU KNOW, PEOPLE DIDN'T EVEN START HAVING CHILDREN BACK IN THE EARLY PART OF THE BOOK OF GENESIS UNTIL THEY WERE 250 AND 300 YEARS OLD. AND SO WE DON'T KNOW HOW MANY YEARS THIS WAS, BUT IT WAS A MINIMUM, A MINIMUM OF 30 YEARS. IT COULD HAVE BEEN, WELL, A HUNDRED YEARS AFTER THE FALL OF ADAM AND EVE THAT THIS HAPPENED. I THINK IT WAS MORE LIKE THAT BECAUSE CAIN TALKED ABOUT EVERY PERSON WHO WILL HEAR ABOUT THIS WILL SEEK TO KILL HIM. IF IT HAD ONLY BEEN 30 YEARS, NOBODY, THERE WOULDN'T HAVE BEEN THAT MANY PEOPLE, BUT A HUNDRED YEARS, THERE COULD HAVE BEEN HUNDREDS OF PEOPLE BY THIS TIME. SO ANYWAY, THIS IS A LONG PERIOD OF TIME AFTER THEIR EXPULSION FROM THE GARDEN, AND YET GOD IS STILL TALKING TO THEM. HE DIDN'T DRIVE THEM AWAY FROM HIS PRESENCE. HE DROVE THEM AWAY FROM THE TREE OF THE KNOWLEDGE OF GOOD AND EVIL BECAUSE HE DIDN'T WANT US LIVING FOREVER IN A SINFUL BODY. AT THE CLOSE OF OUR PROGRAM YESTERDAY, I WAS JUST BEGINNING TO MAKE THESE POINTS. BUT PEOPLE JUST THINK THAT DYING IS TERRIBLE. AND I WILL SAY THIS, IT WAS NOT GOD'S FIRST PLAN FOR US. HE WANTED US TO LIVE FOREVER. I'VE ACTUALLY READ THINGS THAT DOCTORS CAN'T COMPLETELY UNDERSTAND WHY IT IS THAT PEOPLE DIE, BECAUSE OUR BODY REGENERATES. OUR CELLS ARE REPLACED LIKE EVERY SEVEN YEARS OR SOMETHING. THE BODY IS BUILT TO LIVE FOREVER, AND YET BECAUSE OF SICKNESS AND DISEASE, IT DOESN'T. GOD ORIGINALLY CREATED US WITH NOTHING BUT LIFE IN US, AND THERE WAS NO DEATH. BUT ONCE SIN ENTERED INTO THE WORLD, AND ONCE SATAN ENTERED INTO THE WORLD AND BEGAN TO BRING SICKNESS AND DISEASE AND HEARTACHE AND DEPRESSION AND DISCOURAGEMENT AND ON AND ON, ALL OF THESE THINGS, DEATH IS ACTUALLY A POSITIVE THING FOR PEOPLE LIVING IN A FALLEN WORLD IF THEY ACCEPT THE LORD. BECAUSE IF YOU ACCEPT THE LORD, WE HAVE A PROMISE THAT WE ARE GOING TO LIVE FOREVER IN ETERNITY IN A MANSION ON STREETS THAT ARE PAVED WITH GOLD. WE WON'T HAVE SICKNESS. WE WON'T HAVE DISEASE. WE WON'T HAVE DEPRESSION. IT EVEN SAYS THAT THE THINGS THAT ARE GOING TO BE IN HEAVEN ARE SO GLORIOUS THAT THE FORMER THINGS WILL NEVER EVEN COME TO MIND. WHATEVER YOU'VE SUFFERED DOWN HERE IN THIS LIFE, IF YOU ARE BORN AGAIN, YOU ARE GOING TO GO INTO THE PRESENCE OF GOD, AND IT IS GOING TO BE SO GLORIOUS IN ETERNITY THAT WE WILL FORGET EVERY ROTTEN THING THAT EVER HAPPENED DOWN HERE. IT WON'T EVEN COME TO MIND. SO GOD HAS SOMETHING PLANNED FOR US THAT IS GLORIOUS, BUT YOU CAN'T ACCESS IT UNTIL YOU DIE, UNTIL YOU GET OUT OF THIS BODY AND GO TO BE WITH THE LORD. THE APOSTLE PAUL UNDERSTOOD THIS, AND BECAUSE OF IT, HE SAYS, MAN, I WOULD RATHER DIE AND GO TO BE WITH THE LORD THAN TO LIVE IN THIS PHYSICAL BODY. HE SAYS, I'M IN A STRAIGHT BETWEEN TWO. I HAVE A DESIRE TO DEPART AND TO BE WITH CHRIST, WHICH IS FAR BETTER. SO FOR... SINCE GOD HAD PLANNED REDEMPTION AND HE KNEW THAT SOMEDAY HE WOULD FORGIVE US OF ALL OF OUR SINS, AND FOR THOSE WHO ACCEPTED THIS REDEMPTION AND BECAME BORN AGAIN, THAT WE WOULD ENTER INTO AN ETERNITY THAT WOULD BE AWESOME. THAT'S THE REASON HE DROVE THEM AWAY FROM THE GARDEN. NOT BECAUSE HE DROVE THEM OUT OF HIS PRESENCE, BECAUSE HIS PRESENCE WAS STILL WITH THEM IN THE FOURTH CHAPTER. HE WAS STILL TALKING WITH CAIN AND ABEL, AND HE WAS STILL COMMUNICATING WITH THEM. HE DID NOT DRIVE MAN AWAY FROM HIS PRESENCE. MATTER OF FACT, IT GOES ON TO SAY THAT AFTER THE LORD HAD CONFRONTED CAIN OVER HIS SIN, IT SAYS IN GENESIS CHAPTER 4, VERSE 16, AND CAIN WENT OUT FROM THE PRESENCE OF THE LORD AND DWELT IN THE LAND OF NOD ON THE EAST OF EDEN. HOW COULD HE GO OUT FROM THE PRESENCE OF THE LORD IF HE DIDN'T HAVE THE PRESENCE OF THE LORD? SO MY POINT IS, 
THAT JUST LIKE ROMANS CHAPTER 5 VERSE 13 SAYS THAT UNTIL THE LAW, SIN WAS IN THE WORLD, BUT SIN IS NOT IMPUTED WHEN THERE IS NO LAW. GOD WAS NOT HOLDING MAN'S SINS AGAINST THEM. GOD DID NOT SEPARATE MAN FROM HIS PRESENCE. GOD WAS STILL IN TUNE WITH MAN. HE WAS STILL TALKING TO MAN. HE WAS STILL TALKING TO CAIN AND ABEL. IT WAS CAIN THAT LEFT THE PRESENCE OF GOD, NOT GOD THAT LEFT CAIN'S PRESENCE. NO, GOD WAS THERE, BUT CAIN LEFT THE PRESENCE OF THE LORD. NOW THIS IS IMPORTANT TO VERIFY ONCE AGAIN THAT IN ROMANS CHAPTER 5, VERSE 13, THE GOD WASN'T IMPUTING SIN UNTO PEOPLE UNTIL THE TIME THAT THE LAW WAS GIVEN. SO IF GOD WAS DEALING IN MERCY AND BASICALLY look, LOOKING FORWARD TO THE SACRIFICE OF JESUS AND PUTTING OUR PUNISHMENT uh, FOR SIN ON CREDIT, LOOKING FORWARD TO JESUS, WHY DID HE EVER GIVE THE LAW IN THE FIRST PLACE? WELL, AGAIN, LET ME POINT THIS OUT. I MENTIONED THIS EARLIER, BUT IF THE LAW HAD BEEN GOD'S FIRST CHOICE, HE COULD HAVE GIVEN THAT TO ADAM AND EVE IN THE GARDEN OF EDEN BECAUSE HE WAS TALKING TO THEM FACE TO FACE. DURING THE TIME OF MOSES, IT WAS UNUSUAL FOR GOD TO TALK TO A PERSON FACE TO FACE. NOW, HE DID THAT WITH MOSES, AND HE EVEN CITED WHEN, YOU KNOW, WHEN SOME PEOPLE CAME OUT AGAINST MOSES, HE SAYS, LOOK, IF SOMEBODY uh, IS GOING TO BE A PROPHET OR SOMETHING, I'LL REVEAL MYSELF IN A DREAM OR SOMETHING TO THEM, BUT MY SERVANT MOSES IS NOT THAT WAY, WHO I WILL TALK TO FACE TO FACE. MOSES WAS THE EXCEPTION IN HIS DAY, BUT BACK WHEN CAIN, WHEN um, ADAM AND EVE FIRST SINNED, IT WAS NORMAL FOR THEM TO MEET WITH GOD AND TO HEAR HIS VOICE IN THE GARDEN. GOD COULD HAVE COMMUNICATED THE TEN COMMANDMENTS TO THEM FROM THE VERY BEGINNING. WHY DIDN'T GOD JUST GIVE THE LAW THE MOMENT THAT ADAM AND EVE SINNED? THE VERY FACT THAT IT TOOK 2,000 YEARS SHOWS YOU THAT THIS WAS NOT HIS FIRST CHOICE. AND THERE'S PROBABLY MANY REASONS, BUT ONE OF THE REASONS THAT GOD DIDN'T JUST IMMEDIATELY GIVE US THE COMMANDS IS BECAUSE THE LAW WORKS WRATH. IT SAYS THAT IN A NUMBER OF PLACES. ROMANS CHAPTER 4, VERSE 15 SAYS, THE LAW WORKETH WRATH. Where, FOR WHERE THERE IS NO LAW, THERE IS NO TRANSGRESSION. SO IF GOD HAD GIVEN THE LAW TO ADAM AND EVE, IT WOULD HAVE RELEASED HIS WRATH UPON THEM, AND THEY WERE ALREADY DEALING WITH SO MUCH GUILT AND SO MUCH CONDEMNATION THAT I'M NOT SURE THAT ADAM AND EVE COULD HAVE CONTAINED IT. GOD DIDN'T WANT US TO KNOW HOW BAD IT WAS. YOU KNOW, ALL THAT ADAM AND EVE KNEW WHEN THEY SINNED WAS THAT THEY WERE NAKED. AND EVEN THOUGH THAT WAS TRUE, THAT WAS ONE OF THE MINOR THINGS THAT HAD HAPPENED TO THEM. YOU KNOW, IF THE LORD HAD SOMEHOW OR ANOTHER JUST PULLED BACK A CURTAIN AND SHOWN THEM WHAT HITLER WOULD DO, KILLING SIX MILLION JEWS, WHAT STALIN WOULD DO, KILLING A MINIMUM OF PROBABLY 20 MILLION RUSSIANS. SOME PEOPLE HAVE ESTIMATED IT UP TO 60 MILLION, AND POL POT, AND ON AND ON YOU COULD GO, GENGHIS KHAN, ALL OF THE TERRIBLE THINGS THAT HAD HAPPENED. YOU KNOW, IF THOSE OF YOU WATCHING THIS PROGRAM, IF THE LORD HAD JUST SHOWN ADAM AND EVE THE HURT THAT YOU WOULD EXPERIENCE IN YOUR LIFE, THERE ARE SOME OF YOU WATCHING THIS PROGRAM THAT YOU'VE LOST YOUR LOVED ONES. YOU'VE AT LEAST LOST PARENTS. YOU'VE LOST FRIENDS. SOME OF YOU HAVE LOST YOUR MATE. YOU'VE GONE THROUGH SICKNESS. YOU'VE GONE THROUGH DISEASE. YOU'VE BEEN THROUGH REJECTION, HURT, ANGER, BITTERNESS. IF HE HAD JUST SHOWN WHAT HAD HAPPENED IN YOUR LIFE TO ADAM AND EVE, I DON'T BELIEVE THEY'D HAVE BEEN ABLE TO HANDLE IT THINKING THAT I'M THE ONE THAT STARTED ALL OF THIS. LOOK WHAT I HAVE DONE. THEY DIDN'T KNOW VERY MUCH. THEY DIDN'T KNOW THE DEPTHS THAT SIN WOULD CAUSE IN THE HUMAN RACE. ALL THEY KNEW WAS THEY WERE NAKED. THAT WAS RELATIVELY MILD. ONE OF THE REASONS THAT GOD DIDN'T GIVE THE LAW IMMEDIATELY IS BECAUSE HE DIDN'T WANT US TO KNOW HOW FILTHY, HOW VILE WE WERE. BUT HIS LACK OF PUNISHMENT UPON SIN BEGIN TO GIVE A BOLDNESS TO PEOPLE TO GO OUT AND LIVE IN SIN BECAUSE THEY WEREN'T SEEING THE CONSEQUENCES OF THEIR SIN. LOOK AT THIS RIGHT HERE IN GENESIS CHAPTER 4. AFTER CAIN HAD KILLED ABEL, INSTEAD OF GOD PUNISHING CAIN, GOD ACTUALLY PUT A MARK UPON CAIN TO PROTECT HIM SO THAT OTHER PEOPLE WOULDN'T KILL HIM. AND THEN IT SAYS RIGHT HERE IN GENESIS CHAPTER 4, AND IN VERSE 23, IT SAYS, LAMECH SAID UNTO HIS WIVES, ADA AND Zillah. HE'S THE FIRST PERSON LISTED IN SCRIPTURE WHO HAD uh, PRACTICED POLYGAMY, WHO HAD MORE THAN ONE WIFE. 
HE SAYS, HEAR MY VOICE, YE WIVES OF LAMACH, HEARKEN UNTO MY SPEECH, FOR I HAVE SLAIN A MAN TO MY WOUNDING AND A YOUNG MAN TO MY HURT. YOU KNOW, IN THE KING JAMES, THIS IS A LITTLE AWKWARD, BUT IF YOU LOOK IT UP IN ANY OTHER TRANSLATION, IT JUST MEANS THAT HE KILLED A MAN IN SELF-DEFENSE. THIS GUY WAS TRYING TO KILL HIM, AND HE KILLED THIS MAN IN SELF-DEFENSE. AND IN VERSE 24, IT SAYS, IF CAIN SHALL BE AVENGED SEVENFOLD, TRULY LAMACH, SEVENTY AND SEVENFOLD. IN OTHER WORDS, HE FELT MORE JUSTIFIED IN KILLING THIS MAN BECAUSE IT WAS IN SELF-DEFENSE THAN WHAT CAIN HAD DONE, AND YET GOD DIDN'T PUNISH CAIN. HE PUT A MARK ON CAIN SO THAT NOBODY WOULD KILL CAIN. AND HE'S SAYING, IF CAIN GOT BY WITH MURDER, THEN CERTAINLY I'M GOING TO GET BY WITH MURDER BECAUSE MINE IS MORE JUSTIFIABLE. YOU KNOW WHAT'S WRONG WITH THAT? GOD DIDN'T SAY THAT. LAMACH SAID THIS. LAMACH WAS COMPARING HIMSELF. IT SAYS IN 2 CORINTHIANS CHAPTER 10, VERSE 12, THAT THEY COMPARING THEMSELVES AMONG THEMSELVES AND MEASURING THEMSELVES BY THEMSELVES ARE NOT WISE. BUT THIS IS WHAT PEOPLE DO ALL OF THE TIME. THEY LOOK AROUND AND THEY SEE, WELL, THIS PERSON GOT BY WITH THIS, AND IF THIS PERSON GOT BY WITH IT, WELL, THEN I SHOULD BE ABLE TO GET BY WITH IT. WE DON'T LOOK AT A PERFECT STANDARD OF WHAT GOD DEMANDS. WE DO THINGS RELATIVE. IT'S RELATIVE MORALITY IS WHAT MOST PEOPLE HAVE. AND SO THIS IS WHAT LAMACH WAS DOING. LAMACH WAS SAYING, CAIN GOT BY WITH MURDER. CERTAINLY, I'M GOING TO GET BY WITH MURDER. AND THEN PEOPLE CAME BY AND THEY SAW, WELL, LAMACH GOT BY WITH THIS, AND CAIN GOT BY WITH THIS, AND PRETTY SOON, PEOPLE JUST THINK, WELL, MURDER IS NOT THAT BIG OF A DEAL. GOD HADN'T KILLED ANYBODY. HE HADN'T PUNISHED ANYBODY. AND SO THEY BEGIN TO TAKE GOD'S LACK OF PUNISHMENT UPON SIN AS APPROVAL. AND THAT CERTAINLY WAS NOT SO. EVERY SINGLE SIN, JESUS REVEALED THAT EVERY IDLE WORD THAT MEN SPEAK, THEY WILL GIVE AN ACCOUNT THEREOF IN THE DAY OF JUDGMENT, FOR BY YOUR WORDS YOU SHALL BE JUSTIFIED, AND BY YOUR WORDS YOU SHALL BE CONDEMNED. EVERY IDLE WORD, AND MAN, ALL OF THESE THINGS, EVERY SIN, IT WASN'T THAT GOD WASN'T PAYING ATTENTION. IT WAS THAT GOD WAS DEALING WITH MAN IN MERCY, NOT IMPUTING THEIR TRESPASSES UNTO THEM, BECAUSE HE LOVED US, AND HE WAS LOOKING FORWARD TO JESUS, AND HE WAS GOING TO IMPUTE OUR SIN UNTO JESUS AND, and ALLOW US TO GO FREE, NOT BECAUSE HE WAS IGNORING SIN. HE WAS TAKING RECORD OF EVERY SINGLE SIN THAT WAS com COMMITTED, BUT HE WAS JUST LOOKING FORWARD TO JESUS, AND THAT'S THE REASON HE WASN'T PUNISHING THESE PEOPLE. BUT PEOPLE BEGIN TO TAKE GOD'S LACK OF PUNISHMENT AS APPROVAL. AND BECAUSE OF IT, SIN BEGAN TO GROW EXPONENTIALLY. PEOPLE WEREN'T SEEING PUNISHMENT. THEY WEREN'T SEEING THE CONSEQUENCES FOR THEIR SIN THE WAY THAT THEY SHOULD. AND SO BECAUSE OF IT, THEY THOUGHT, WELL, SIN'S NOT THAT BAD. AND THEY BEGIN TO EVEN LOSE THEIR STANDARD OF WHAT RIGHT AND WRONG WAS BECAUSE IT WAS THIS RELATIVE THING. AND THEY WERE THINKING CAIN GOT BY WITH MURDER. LAMACH GOT BY WITH MURDER. THIS PERSON KILLED IT. AND SO THEY JUST BEGIN TO START LIVING UNGODLY. THEY HAD MULTIPLE WIVES. THEY WERE HAVING SEX WITH ANIMALS. THEY WERE HAVING SEX BETWEEN THE SAME SEX, WHICH GOD SAYS IS A TOTAL ABOMINATION. PEOPLE BEGIN TO LOSE THEIR KNOWLEDGE OF RIGHT AND WRONG. AND SO EVEN THOUGH GOD DID NOT WANT US TO KNOW HOW BAD OUR SIN WAS BECAUSE IT WOULD BRING WRATH, AND IT WOULD BRING CONDEMNATION, EVENTUALLY HE HAD TO START IMPUTING OUR SINS UNTO US. EVENTUALLY HE HAD TO START PUNISHING SIN. HE HAD TO START PUTTING FEAR IN PEOPLE. I THINK IT'S PSALMS CHAPTER 36, VERSE 1, THAT SAYS, THE TRANSGRESSION OF THE WICKED SAYS WITHIN MY HEART THAT THERE IS NO FEAR OF GOD BEFORE THEIR EYES. GOD WANTED TO DEAL WITH US IN MERCY, BUT WE WERE TAKING ADVANTAGE OF GOD'S MERCY AND LACK OF PUNISHMENT, AND BECAUSE OF IT, SIN WAS JUST ESCALATING. AND I SAID THIS EARLIER IN THE WEEK, BUT EVEN THOUGH GOD WASN'T BRINGING HIS WRATH ON SIN, SIN HAD A TWOFOLD EFFECT. IT NOT ONLY WAS WORTHY OF THE WRATH AND THE JUDGMENT AND THE PUNISHMENT OF GOD, AND GOD WAS NOT RELEASING THAT ON MANKIND FOR THE FIRST 2,000 YEARS BECAUSE HE WAS TRYING TO EXTEND MERCY TOWARDS US. BUT EVEN THOUGH THE WRATH OF GOD WASN'T BEING PUT UPON US. SATAN, THIS IS THE SECOND uh, INROAD of, OF SIN INTO OUR LIFE. SATAN GAINED ACCESS TO US THROUGH SIN. ROMANS CHAPTER 6, VERSE 16 
It says, Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. So even though God was not releasing his wrath, Satan was gaining access and Satan was destroying the human race. The lifespan went from 969 years down to where he had to put a minimum on it of 120 years. Satan was destroying people, not only physically and them dying, but emotionally. The depression, the anger, the bitterness, the hatred was just eating up the human race. So even though God did not want us to know the depths of our sin and He didn't want us to be guilt-ridden, He eventually had to put His fear in us, fear of punishment to restrain the amount of sin that men were committing. If God had not restrained the amount of sin that men were committing, there literally would not have been a virgin left on this earth for His plan of redemption to be fulfilled through. Jesus could not have been burn, born because there wouldn't have been a virgin for Him to come through. That's how bad it was. That is not an exaggeration. I mean, during the time of Sodom and Gomorrah, uh, homosexuality was the rule of the day. Uh, bestiality was the rule of the day. You know, that's not always pointed out in Scripture, but I've read a lot of archaeological, historical things, and they have found through archaeology that, I mean, bestiality was common. Did you know that they are actually beginning to experiment in England? I had a woman Andrea Williams come and speak at our minister's conference, and she's a barrister. She's the head of Christian Concern over there. And in the UK, they actually are experimenting with human sperm mixed with animal eggs. And they're creating these monsters. That was the normal. They didn't have maybe the scientific way of doing it, but men and women were both having sex with animals. And I mean, the human race was becoming so corrupt that if God hadn't have placed some limit upon sin, well, then there wouldn't have been a virgin left for Jesus to have been born through. So God had to do something until the time could come that Jesus was born, and that something that He did was the law. It wasn't His first choice. It wasn't His best choice. Matter of fact, in the book of Galatians chapter 3, it shows you that the law was given because of the abundance of transgressions and it was only limited until Christ should come. It was never intended to be the foundation, the normal way that God dealt with men. For 2,000 years, God did not impute man's trespasses unto them. Romans chapter 5, verse 13. But eventually He gave the law and it accomplished a purpose and it was necessary because of the sin of mankind. But it was not God's best and the new covenant has superseded the law. And if you are living under the law today, you are missing out on God's best for you. I'm out of time today, but again tomorrow I'm going to be teaching on this. 